Hey everybody, it is Evelyn of Taz Boards and Taz Boards Pyro, and today we are going to do a wood burning of an old fashioned candle holder with a burning candle and the word dream. We're gonna do it on a piece of nine by five and a half uh, birch wood, and I will walk you through every step of the way. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is sand our workpiece. It's not 100% smooth, and it will be a lot easier to wood burn um, if we can get some of these bumps out. So we're gonna do that first. I'm gonna start with, I just have a variety of <laughs> random sandpaper here. I'm gonna start with one that feels a little more gritty. So this one, um, I think it's 120 grit. It's really hard to read. So I'm just gonna sand down some of these bigger bumps really quickly. Okay, I got some of the bigger ones off. Now I'm gonna go to a little bit smoother grit. This one is 220. And then finally, we're gonna go to something super smooth, which is, this might be 400. I think this is 400 grit. So let me get my garbage can. I'm gonna just uh, wipe this into the garbage really quickly. Smooth it one more time. 400. Safety tip, always wear a mask when you're sanding. All right, now we have a nice smooth work piece. It feels really good. And the next step is to decide which way you want it to go. So if you look at your design and then you kind of look at the wood grains in your wood, all wood pieces will be slightly different. So it is completely up to you which way you want to do it. When I look at mine, I can see some really faint wood grain patterns that kind of go this way. And I just think that with the direction of the smoke in the drawing, I think that the wood grain will fit really nicely this direction. So um, in this particular case, my, my design is exactly the same size as my workpiece. So I'm just gonna match it up as best as I can. And then I'm gonna get some scotch tape. And I'm just gonna tape it down at the top. Now, a couple tips for you here. Um, whenever possible, do not tape over your design. Um, you can still trace over tape, but it's a little bit harder usually. And then the other tip is tape it so that you can flip it over to work on it once you have the design traced and that you can flip it back in case you need to refer to your drawing um, if you missed any tracing while you're, uh, <laughs> if you missed any of your design while you're tracing. So the next step is to flip it over, get your tracing paper, and make sure you put your tracing paper dark side down. Otherwise you will be tracing for nothing. And you don't have to tape it down, you can just kind of lay it on top and then flip your piece back over. And as long as you have the tracing paper 
completely under the places where you'll be tracing, you'll be 100% fine. So the next step is just to trace everything um, in your design so that it's transferred to your workpiece. Don't draw too heavy. Um, you want to you wanna trace dark enough so that it transfers, but you don't want to trace so hard that when you go to erase, when you're all done wood burning, that it's really hard to erase. So you can do a little test first. Just do a little test here. And then check. As long as you can see your design, you're fine. If it's too dark, lighten up on your pencil a little bit. So now let's get to tracing. You can trace in whatever order you want, however fast or slow you want. If you want to try to be really exact, you probably want to trace a little slower. If you want your drawing to be a little more free flowing, a little bit more of your own design, feel free to sketch it a little more quickly without worrying too much about the exact details. The cool thing about a melting candle or burning candle with melting wax is that there's no right or wrong for how it melts. So if you want to add a couple of your own little extra details, maybe a little extra wax here, a little extra wax here, something like that, that is totally up to you. You are more than welcome to do that. This is your design and your wood burning, not mine. So however you want it to end up, go for it. So just tracing. The good thing too about tracing uh, before you wood burn is you get used to your design and then if you trace something in a way that you don't like, you can always change it while you're wood burning. So you are not tied to the way that your tracing ends up. This design is a little more complicated down here. Um, and again, you don't have to get all of, you don't have to trace all of this if you don't want to. And if you miss something, um, it is definitely not the end of the world. The design really is just about, um, it's, it's uh, let's call it, it's an artistic rendering of kind of a shiny, the shininess and the, the glistening of the candle light off of the metal. And again, you know, that can really look a whole lot of different ways. So however you want to trace or draw your own swirly lines in here, totally up to you. And then also we'll be doing a little bit of shading. So if there's certain lines that you don't really like, maybe you can just shade over them later on. So this is not exact, doesn't have to be exact, and that is the beauty of designs like this. They're really left open to interpretation and however you want them to look. But there's enough here that if you don't know how you want them to look, you can copy it. And either way you do it, will look amazing. Okay, I think I got everything here. Let's just double check. Um, <laughs> hard to tell for sure, but I think it looks fine. So then the last step is to trace the letters. I usually leave the, the lettering until last because lettering is usually a little more exact. And of course, if you're using a computer font like I am, you want it to look 
a little neater, not quite as messy maybe as it does down here. And the better you trace your lettering, the easier, the easier it will be to make it look really nice when you're wood burning it. So go a little slower here. So I am recording this session. It is the beginning of September and in Virginia where I live right now it is still very warm and beautiful outside. It's, it's around 80 degrees and last night I had a dream that I went snow tubing down a mountain. <laughs> kind of random. It was really really fun. And I woke up with a sore neck. Not really the best kind of dream, I guess. But I did enjoy myself in the moment. All right, so there's the end of the tracing. Let's just see how it looks. I think it looks fine. So we'll put the tracing paper away and get ready to burn this design. This is always one of the hardest parts is folding up the tracing paper. It's kind of like a map. You eventually give up and just do the best you can and toss it to the side thinking you'll fix it later. But do you ever fix it later? No. It's your friend or your partner who is a map folding extraordinaire who comes back to it and fixes it. Okay, I just turned on my wood burning pen and I have it at about medium high heat and I'm using the tip that I pretty much use for almost everything. So whatever wood burning pen you have, as long as you have a, a um, let's call it a regular tip, <laughs> uh, you should be good to go. We're gonna try to do the whole design with this. We might switch to a shading tip toward the end to add a little bit more highlights and shadows, but we'll see how we feel when we get to that point. When I'm wood burning, I usually like to start at a place that won't be highly visible right off the bat. So maybe we can do something that's hiding down in the saucer here. So let's just check. I'm just checking the temperature and the, the lightness, darkness. And I think it looks okay. I can probably go a little bit darker to start out with, but better to start out light and go dark because it's hard to go from dark to light. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace all of my lines with my wood burning pen. And you'll find as you go along, um, you can kind of kind of feel where you should go slower, where you should go faster, um, how hard you should press. All of those things factor into the amount of lightness and darkness that you get. And down here, we don't have to worry too much about getting really even lights and darks because it is kind of reflecting and shadows and lights all over the place. So this is a really good place to practice if you want to experiment with how to make lighter and darker sections. So for example, because I have, I can change the temperature, I can turn up the temperature and see what happens. Get darker lines. can turn it way up, maybe on this side, get really dark. See the difference?
Okay, and then you just keep on going. Just follow the lines as best you can. No great pressure yet. We are starting to get to more visible spots. Forgot this one down here. So we want to be careful on the curve here and the curve here. Um, and we want to be careful with this part here and also the full outline of the dish. So if you're comfortable going there, you certainly can, but I'm going to practice a little bit more by going right up into the candle because the candle is also less fussy than the rest. Because as we said, candles can melt at different rates so they don't have to look a certain way in order to still look really cool. This is coming together pretty quickly. Okay, let's get to some of the little bit harder part. Um, and in this case, maybe we want to turn the pen down a little bit so that we can take our time without it burning into the wood too deeply. And then we just want to be really careful. Got to concentrate. It can be hard to get the circular part, so just know you don't have to do it all at one time. You can do it in little sections. Take your time. Maybe we'll do this part next. I like to do parallel sections together because I keep my hand at the exact same angle while I do them, which helps them look more even. And then Turn your hand or turn your workpiece if you want. I'm not turning my workpiece because I don't want to have to adjust the camera angle for you, but I am turning my hand and then I'm going slowly up the side. I'm not following my pencil line exactly. And you don't have to either. Just going slowly, taking my time. Wood burning is definitely an art form where you need to learn to take your time. The wood's not going anywhere. The pen's not going anywhere. <laughs> you need to just be patient.
right. Just moving on, really just tracing. That's one of the cool parts about wood burning when you're just starting out, especially. And if you don't consider yourself super creative or artistic, you can still make something look really, really good when all you do is trace the lines. Okay, now next I'm gonna do the edge of the saucer. I didn't do a very good job tracing here, so I'm gonna try my best to make it look smoother than the pencil line. But you know what? No worries if you can't, because if someone questions you, which they won't, <laughs> but if you need kind of a reason behind why your saucer is not 100% circular and smooth, you just say, well, it's brass and it got dented because it fell on the floor when the person was carrying the candle and tripped over the toys on the floor. It's totally legit. And then it's fun because your candle has a story. So again, I'm just going really slowly you could see my whole body, my shoulders are just like hunched up up to my ears for no real reason. Um, as soon as we finish this, we'll take a little break and relax our hand and our shoulders because this posture isn't good for anybody. And I'm kind of holding my breath too. The secrets of an artist, hunched shoulders and held breath. Also, I don't do this, <laughs> but my mom does. <laughs> Sticks her tongue out when she's concentrating really hard. I'm more of a purse my lips type of person when I'm concentrating. Whatever you need to do, I don't care. I won't judge. Just going slowly around the saucer. All right. Okay, next we're gonna do the flame. The flame and the smoke. So this will be interesting and this is where you can think about stylistically how you want it to work. You can literally just trace the lines. That is totally okay. Um, or you can practice some shading and you know some differences in, in darkness and lights. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the inner flame, is that, that's usually the, the hot, that's white, right? So I'm not gonna fill in the inner flame. But I am gonna, let's see. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. And then I'll get my tracer out, or my, um, my shading tip when I'm ready, and I'll do this part shaded. And we'll just see how it looks. If we don't like it, um, <laughs> we can change it. All right. So the next part is the word dream. And dream, or words, um, they can be a little challenging. I'm sorry, I forgot to let you take a break. Let's do that now. I'm gonna put my pen away for a second. I have this nice holder for it. And I'm just gonna stretch my hand, shake out my shoulders a little bit, shake out my hand. Do a little bit of stretching side to side. Roll my neck. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, <laughs> my neck is really sore. Nothing to do with wood burning though. 
Okay. Got enough of a break. Maybe take a drink of water if you have one next to you. Take a deep breath. <gasps> All right, I'm ready to start back up again. Um, you can also clean your, your tip at this point if you haven't already. I usually use, I have a little wet sponge here and I just dab, 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 turn my pen a couple times, dab, dab, dab. That's what I do. Uh, there are other ways to clean your tip as well, but that is not the focus of this video. So if you do need to learn that, um, we can talk about that more in depth at another time. So the word, you wanna be more careful than you were with this. And what I usually do again is I do not start with the first letter because usually the first letter is the biggest and the one that people notice first. So I usually start somewhere in the middle of the word, work my way to the end of the word, and then start back at the beginning and finish off the word. So in this case, I think I will start with the A. And I'll start with the inner part of the A. And this is very similar to what we were just doing with the saucer. Just going slow, getting those curves. Go over it, try to smooth it out a little bit. Just be patient. If you don't get it perfectly at first, that's okay. Usually what I do is I outline the word first and then I come back and fill it in. Um, in this case, these letters are so skinny that I'm kind of, I'm filling in some of it even during the first go round, but I do always come back and clean up everything at the end. Because then you can kind of see the whole word, all the letters, and you can compare the thicknesses of all the different strokes to make sure that all the letters match up and it looks like one cohesive font. So you just take your time. This is the thing about teaching any class that has creative components is the beginning part, there's a lot to say. <laughs> and the ending result is always super cool. But the middle part where you're doing all of the work, and this is really seriously like any creative endeavor, the middle part, the grunt work, the just following the steps and moving forward and getting the prog uh, making progress, there's not a whole lot to say because it's just a matter of doing the work. So my philosophy is that anyone can be creative if they put in the work. And also, romanticism aside, being creative, um, <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Being creative is really just doing a lot of work. It's putting in hard work. It's, it's, um, it's not romantic, I guess, is what I was trying to say. People think the artistic life is romantic, but it's just as much work. I don't know. I can't really talk and do the work at the same time, apparently. So just ignore me. <laughs> Trying to fill the silence, but I guess I don't really need to do that. So feel free to tune me out if you haven't already decided to do that.
finished my word, but there are definitely a few trouble spots that I see. So I'm gonna go back and fix them as much as possible. So for example, right here, it looks really unsmooth. There's like a heavy dark spot and then a light spot and then a heavy, heavy, and in between. It's just, um, it looks a little bumpy. So I'm just gonna go over this whole section all at once and I'm just gonna try to thicken the line so that it matches the thickest part. So this is gonna just be slow and steady. Trying to be careful not to <laughs> make it overly thick. That's the trouble sometimes. Um, sometimes you're better off just leaving it and sometimes you don't realize that until you have already tried to fix it. So up to you, depending on how brave you want to get with this really thin letter. Okay, that's starting to look a little better to me. And then maybe darken it up over here. We will come back one more time as well after we erase, because sometimes after you erase the pencil line, you realize that your wood burning lines are not quite as thick or as dark as you thought they were. So we will have another opportunity. That's fine for now. Okay, now I'm gonna take off or turn off my wood burning pen. I'm gonna clean my tip. I'm gonna put it in its holder for a second. Stretch my hand out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a shading tip. A couple options to choose from. And I think I'm gonna go with this one that is called the spoon shader. Looks like a little spoon. So, I have to get my little pliers out. This is how I change the tip on my pen. And I just loosen these. And this is still really hot, but it is usually easier for me to just move these with my hands and then pull the tip out with my pliers and put it in a metal lid. And then, Take my new one, stick it in there, tighten as much as I can with my hands. Again, careful because it's a little bit hot and then tighten all the way with the pliers. Now I can turn this one on and we'll get ready to do some shading. We'll start, we'll start in a, in a um, non-visible area down in the saucer again. Um, and then when we're comfortable, we'll come in here and make some of this shaded. So let's see. I'm gonna come in here. Um, if we think about shadows and lights and darks, um, I am not the best at this by any means, but what I'm imagining is since the light source is most clearly, definitely up at the top, then anything um, underneath something is gonna have shading. So what I know for sure is that this section of the handle is gonna be shaded in. So that's a good place to start. And you kind of use the bottom flat part of the tip and just go gently, start to fill it in. And if you need it to be darker, you can go back over it, take a little more time and or turn up the level of your um, pen. A little bit of shadow here. Maybe a little bit of shadow here. And 
anything underneath or kind of to the left, I guess. And then also down in the saucer, we can just kind of do a mix of shaded in and not shaded in. So for example, maybe you decide that some of these little pools, <laughs> these uh, little sections can be shaded in. Or maybe you decide that those are the light spots. It's up to you, however you want to do it. Maybe in this case I do the big section is shaded. Really all we're trying to do is do a mix of both to make it look like there's reflections happening. Again, patience is your friend. Just take your time. Kind of get used to what's happening with your pen, how you can make the different colors, really shades, it's not a whole lot of color going on here. You might not be able to get even shading, but again, that's okay. This is brass. Maybe there's a fingerprint. Maybe it got dented. Who knows? Maybe the light is just playing off it in really strange ways. Anything could be happening. So when I would burn, sometimes I get bored working on one particular section. <laughs> so then I move to the next, come back to it when I'm ready. Don't forget to clean your pen every once in a while. I'm starting to feel good about my shading technique. Sometimes it takes a little while to kind of kick in to see what feels good and how hard to press and all that stuff. So starting to enjoy the shading that's coming out of here, which means I'm almost ready to take it to the next level with going up to the flame and the smoke, which I know can be a scary prospect. So if that just struck fear into your heart, that's okay. We'll go to the candle next. <laughs> you don't have to worry. Doing a little extra shading around this um, handle. A little darker. 
And again, we're gonna come back through all of this again after we erase the pencil mark. Let's see, what does this look like? Maybe. Maybe just a little bit of shading in here. You want to shade a lot of things, but not everything. That's my rule of thumb. And if you do accidentally shade everything, then you got to go back and shade some things darker. All right, moving up here. Again, just try if you can to imagine where where the light might be hitting off of and where it might not be able to reach. The spots that it's hitting, don't burn those. Spots that it can't reach, burn those super dark. And then if you smooth it, if you uh, shade it smooth, then it's a smooth candle. If you shade it bumpy, it's been burned a lot. Either way is fine. This is like a glistening pool of melted wax. I think it's looking kind of cool, don't you? Okay, now what I want to do is I want to keep the middle part completely light. I want to shade in the next section a little bit and then I want to kind of hint at additional light. I don't know if I'll be able to do this very well but I'm going to try it. once we erase the pencil line, we'll be able to see how good of a job we did. If we didn't do a good job, we'll just change it. Okay, and then the smoke. Just try to shade within the pencil line as much as possible, but it's smoke, it's wispy. Smoke doesn't stay in the lines, so it's okay if you don't stay in the lines too. And up to you if you want the smoke to fade out at the end, how much you want it to fade out, where you want it to fade out, all that stuff. Completely up to you. So I'm kind of doing lighter and lighter. I'm going to go back over here, make it a little darker. Okay, I'm ready to erase my pencil lines, see where we're at, and then go over everything one more time. So I like to use the sand eraser. Um, it's kind of like sandpaper um, and an eraser combined. It just erases a lot better on, regular, on wood than regular erasers. Sorry for all the shaking. Okay. 
Okay, so <laughs> what I can see is I can still see all my pencil lines right here. So what I might have to do is go back to my sandpaper, my actual sandpaper, and try to sand this down. Um, I can do it more with this if I want to, um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand it down and then I'm gonna, that will also get rid of some of this wood burning, but I'll just re-wood burn it when I'm done. All right, so let's just go back and clean some of this up. Let my pen heat up again. I turned it off for a second. And stretch out my hand. Erasing is way harder than I thought. Again, up to you exactly how dark you want this to get. <laughs> or up to your wood burning pen. <laughs> you can let it decide too. And if you have a wood pattern here that you want to follow, sometimes that's kind of cool to do too. So maybe instead of following the original path, maybe I go down here. want a little bit more highlights and shadows down here so I'm going to turn my pen up a little higher still have my shading tip and just darken up a few sections
And if you want, you can add some darker um, crisper lines by using the top rounded portion of your shading pen, shading tip. So you can kind of make some of these lines come back to life. You can also shade with it a little bit. Um, it can be a bit tricky though. So I'm really just going through and adding shading wherever I feel like it's needed. Which is kind of um, <laughs> almost everywhere. Just doing finishing kind of touches, adding my own flair to this. And that's what you should be doing right now too. Add your own flair. And start thinking about where you want to put your name. Because you're an artist now, and artists sign their work. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Decided to make the flame stand out a little bit more by using the, the top of my shading tip to make some more lines. Maybe my smoke a little darker right here. And maybe a little more darkness in my candle. Maybe drip the wax a little bit more. And basically at the point where I feel like I'm making it look worse rather than better, that's where I stop. So there we are. That's where I'm stopping. Um, okay, so one last thing, which is to sign your name. And you can either change your tip back, which is probably the easiest, or use the tip that you have, which is probably the laziest. So oh, I just wanna fix this here. This is how my work goes. I think I'm done, and then I look, and then I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I want to do this. Okay, maybe a little bit more in here. All right, 
So I'm going to go with the lazy version, which means I'm going to keep this tip. And you really can just sign your name wherever you prefer. Some people always sign it in the bottom left or the bottom right. Um, I like to sign it oftentimes near the main design. So I'm thinking of either tucking it in here or putting it right here or maybe down here. And I think I'm going to go right here. So I always go with Ev, E, V. There we go. All done. Congratulations, everybody. Hope you had a good time and hope you can join me next time for another wood burning with Ev of Taz Boards and Taz Boards Pyro.